Good morning, everyone. Hi, Lancy. I think that's how you pronounce it. Good morning. Happy Friday. I am in my new office. The construction that you guys heard in the background, this is uh, what it was, what people were building. <laughs> Hey, Vancouver. You guys like those signs? <laughs> yeah, I converted my, my uh, Lambo garage for my office. All right, let's give it a few more minutes before we get started. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Philadelphia. No, the office is too small for a bar. All right. I think most of you guys are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today's uh, AMA Friday. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What you know? What what the hell happened yesterday? Right after my video, actually. Hopefully, I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Right after my video yesterday, from Bitcoin fell from like uh, almost ten thousand directly down to ninety five hundred. And the 9,500 fell down to 9,000. 9,000 fell down all the way up down to 8,100 before kind of bouncing back up to around 9,000 right now. So, um, hey guys, those of you guys join in, welcome. Um, yeah, so before we get to the questions, let's uh, let's talk about what's going on today. Today there's really not much, okay? So I think I wanna bring up, I want to bring up this again. Uh, let me switch my views. Hold on. So I want to bring this up again because I feel like this is important, right? This is not go go away anytime soon. Um, so the question now is on everyone's minds is like what what what's going on, right? Uh, the trustee already made back the 400 million that that they owe to creditors, right? And they have sold that. So now what are the next steps? There's talks about the the remaining bitcoins are going to be just distributed. Some are saying that it goes back to the company, um, which will mean that it, it goes back to uh, Carpellas, right? I think that's his name. That, that would make him an instant billionaire. That no one wants that. Or uh, there's talks about they're still going to continue to liquidate what's going on. Oh. You guys can't see my screen. All that. I'm back. Why can't, why can't you guys see the screen? Hold on, I'm trying to fix it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't show my screen. Oh, 
Well, this sucks. <laughs> uh, trying to share my screen, but it just goes to the logo for some reason. I don't know. I got a got a new computer too, so probably not set up like how it should be. Hold on. It's not it. Why can't this show? Well, this sucks. I don't, I don't know what's going on. When I'm trying to share my screen, it's uh, it's not going through. So I guess I can't share my screen. Yeah, so this is going to be difficult. So, so I can't share my screen for some reason. I'm going to have to figure it out. Um, I'm trying to use this Google Hangout thing, and it's not working. Um, let's see. All right, guys. Well, I guess you guys, you guys, you guys will just have to live at looking at me for today. So, <clears throat> so what, what I want to talk about is that the trustee issue, right? The Mount Gox trustee and how they can, they have 1.6 billion left of Bitcoin, which we don't know what they're going to do, right? They can unload it at any time. And when you have drops like yesterday, where we suddenly drop from 9,900 all the way down to 9,500 almost within like five minutes, then you go from 500, 9,500 down to 9,000 in another like, you know, half hour. And then it drops all the way down to 8,100, right? So it makes you, you have to, yeah, it just, it, it just, it's, it's going to be in the back of your minds, right? Especially mine, like, hey, it's more being dumped. Um, so that's where I think strategy really, really is important now, right? Uh, it's obvious that you want to have a lot of cash. I know a lot of people don't, right? A lot of people have, they're all in and, uh, and they're holding. And unfortunately, you go, you go have to make the determination because right now when the market is still kind of iffy, uh, it seems like it recovers and then immediately drops down, recovers. So we're still going to that sideways zone, although slowly going up, but still, uh, it's very important to have cash, right? So you go have to make a determination if, um, if that means that you have to sell off some cryptos, right? Or you're going to have to put in more money because right now, it seems like the wisest thing to do is really to have a lot of cash on hand and uh, and get in when we see these drastic drops, right? To buy the dips because that's where you can then profit when it goes back up, especially with Bitcoin. Now, the small caps are a lot weaker. Um, to try to do these kind of buy the dips, and, and it's going to be much harder because you can't really – it's it's very unpredictable. But for the last three weeks – we have seen where Bitcoin went from about 8,000 up to 11,500, 11,400, drop down to 8,000 and go back up to eight, you know, 11,400. Um, and then now it came back down again. So yesterday, again, we went to 8,000, almost 8,100, 8,200 before jumping back up. So definitely having a lot of cash right now is the best way to do it, uh, best way to play it. Of course, the strategies I've been talking about in terms of the right portfolio, um, 50, 25, 25 rule, that still applies because if you have 50% in Bitcoin, 25% in big caps, that's 75% of your portfolio. That's really more solid, right, than, uh, than going heavy into small caps during this period. So um, I would say that that's very important. Um, other other things I want to talk about, like really, let, let's go over the news really quick, although there's not that much, right? So I just want to start with that. It's like right now, it, it's very important. Um, it, it's very important to have cash on hand. I mean, that's really the bottom line. You want to have cash to be able to buy these large dips. Um, all right, so look at the news. There, of course, you guys are just looking at me. I can't show you anything, so I apologize for that. 
Gemini, which is a Coinbase competitor in the US, those of you guys that are frustrated with Coinbase should look at Gemini. That's who I use. They plan on adding more crypto tokens, which is really good. They're thinking about Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. So they're basically copying whatever footsteps uh, Coinbase is going. Um, Poliodex, their wallet maintenance is still ongoing, which has been going for 16 hours and it still has not completed. So a lot of people are freaking out over that. What else is going on today? OK Coin, someone took a screenshot of OK Coin talking with their employees, which is one of the biggest exchanges in China. And there's some kind of Chinese corporation going on where OK Coin is saying they're telling their employees to prepare for that, but we don't know what, like whether or not they become like one of the official like Chinese uh, exchanges or they're looking for more information. We don't know at this point. All right. That's it for news. I don't have any more news. I mean, there's really, today is a slow day. Today is basically everyone is wondering what the hell's going on. And really, there's no, there's no explanation for it. There's no fun news coming out today. No governments coming out saying they're banning exchanges or banning Bitcoin or anything like that. There's nothing like that going on today. Um, it, you know what? This is really, you know, you have to chalk it up to something where, there's big players, big whales behind the scene that is based on, right? And all these all these TA guys, they're coming out in the woodwork saying, you know what, I predicted it. I predicted we're gonna go down, right? Um, not not to this extent. Um, there's a lot of TAs, a lot of charts that say it can happen, this could happen, or this could happen, but when something drastically happens to this extent, like within a, that short of a time period. There's something else going on, and we've seen now, right, from the Mt. Gox trustee, when he's selling 10,000, 18,000 Bitcoins at a time in the open market, that's going to make things tank, okay? Not just from himself, but everyone else in the market will see it, and they follow through, right? And who knows what kind of insiders um, they actually know about that ahead of time, that plans it accordingly, so... You know, I just think that something else happened yesterday behind the scenes that we don't know about. So all we can do is play safe, play it smart, and then and then go from there. All right, so let, let's get to questions. I mean, I can't show you guys anything, so but I'll, I'll definitely look it up while you guys are asking it. All right, so let's see. Chris asks, got in crypto in December. People said I missed the big movements and gains. I don't think we're done yet. Yeah, I don't think so. Of course we're not done. If we were done, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? Uh, no, it's definitely not done. We're going to reach all-time highs, right? Um, like I've been saying for a while now, we're we're two months in, really. You know, two months in, um, or I should say three months in, the year is still young, okay? If you look at last year's performance, most of the gains from last year really started second half of the year, and the last quarter of last year is where things went insane, right? There's plenty of time. So we're still early, we're coming out of our lows, right? And we now know why we have our lows, and it drove a lot of people out, but now it's here to stay. Like you, like you guys have been seeing in my videos, I've been pointing out all these companies, big companies that's adopting blockchain. That's not gonna go away. And when companies have block, adopt blockchain, the cryptocurrencies go follow. There's no way it's gonna go away. So no worries about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I said six trillion, okay, which is laughable at by the end of the year. Um, but you know what? Things can move very, very quickly, okay? So, I mean, those of you guys that think it's laughable, in 2017, at the beginning of the year, we were at $20 billion. It went from $20 billion to $800 billion. You tell me who could have predicted that, who would not, not have laughed at that growth. So, you know, right now we're in our lows, um, but I feel like pretty soon we're going to hit a trillion. And once we start hitting, once we hit a trillion, we could grow very, very fast from there. 
Uh, what do I think about Blackboard? I, I like Blackboard. Um, you know, I um, I did a review on them within Insiders a few weeks ago. Um, they actually held pretty well. Of course, they went down along with everything else, but um, but I, I like what they're trying to do, right? To be an ultimate Coinbase competitor or killer, but they have to execute, right? But the, the way they're trying to solve liquidity by uh, looking at inter exchange trades first and then doing external trades with uh, other exchanges, I think that's pretty good. I don't hear much about other people doing that. So uh, I think that's a plus. I think what Blackboard needs to solve is they're trying to um, also be like a visor, right? So they allow people, well, they're going to allow people to copy each other, but also have forms and give advice and all that stuff, which other people, other exchanges do not, right? Because that's kind of like getting into territory of kind of like financial advice, which exchanges definitely do not want to be in that space. But Blackport says they want to help educate people and stuff like that. I don't know. I think that might be the iffy part to their project. <clears throat> Man, everyone's asking about Uncash recently. I, I mean, I, I talked about it. Actually, I talked about Uncash in my last AMA, which is last Friday. Um, I like the concept. It's intrusive, right? They have a proprietary device called the Ion Sensor, which you can put in retail stores, it will automatically sense your phone, tag your phone ID, and then ask you if you want to opt in through text message. And you do, then they um, they start tracking you. Um, and when they start tracking you, that means they get to keep track of um, you know all your shopping info, where you shop, when you shop, what you buy, and stuff like that. It is somewhat intrusive, but you know what? They're paying you in cash for that, and a lot of people will opt in, right? And it, ultimately they claim that it will give you a better shopping experience because as you, uh, as they collect more and more data about you, they know how to sell to you, right? And some people might like that too. So um, I, I do actually really like the concept. I think that they're, they're the only ones in the space. No one else has that device. That's the big thing. That's the very big thing that they worked on that device that no one else has, which they work with Intel, Radius, and Vodafone, and they're gonna expand upon that. <clears throat> yeah, these, these canvases in the back, I just ordered off Groupon, right? I, you just apply a photo, and that's it. It's much cheaper that way than try to order it off like Amazon or some specialty site. Um, what else is there? We talked about Bitcoin price recently. Well, Bitcoin price is is what it is, right? Right now it's about eighty nine hundred. Um, a lot of people are saying that you know what we might go lower. We'll have to see. Right now it, it did. I didn't mention it. it hit about eighty one eighty one hundred eighty two hundred last night because it fell pretty drastically and it did a big bounce. It bounced back up. We went a little bit higher today, so we'll have to see. This is this is not a normal. A dip. This is a very sudden dip, so we don't know what happened behind the scenes, but uh, we will recover from this. Digix Dow. Um, I'm not really sold on Digix Dow, right? Not yet. Um, they have Digix Gold that they're supposed to come out with. That's backed by gold. We will see because that's not out yet. We don't know what what that's going to be like. Um, what is it? Will the Wabi? Oh shoot! I just missed it. Well, someone was asking about Wabi and how they're lagging me on Walton Chain and B Chain. Well, yeah, if they if they go through a rebranding, they'll help. But ultimately, they need some partnerships, right? We have seen B Chain come out with endless, endless partnerships, um, and that's all a good thing. Walton Chain kind of did, but they kind of screwed themselves up, shot themselves in the foot twice with marketing blunders, but nevertheless, they still have partnerships within China, right? And Wabi right now just doesn't. That's the, that's really the only thing holding them back. It, it's bound to happen, right? They're the only player in the game that has the security tag, which no one else has. That's their uniqueness, right? That's why they can tackle canned foods and baby foods and cosmo cosmetics, alcohol. Um, they have something very unique. 
right? So I'll give you an example because they they even um, they even talk about this. They're not in alcohol yet, but they they will be. And you think about like a bottle of wine, because uh, Walton, I think Walton has this on their um, uh, either Walton or Beachin, one of those two, right? Had an example of a bottle of wine where they put their RFID and you could scan it to see if it's legit, right? But the RFID tag is on the label, right? That doesn't mean that someone can't just pop open the cork and dump in whatever they want, right? So that's where Wabi comes in. You can put the label on the freaking uh, cork so no one can tamper with it, right? So it goes a step beyond. So that's why Wabi has a competitive advantage. Uh, just, just right now, they're, they're not taking advantage of it. But once they do, um, they will explode. Am I still into nulls? Yes, I still hold a, a lot into nulls. I still believe in them. And I think the, the news is starting to come out with the fact that now Data Dash is recommending them, right? Um, because prior when I talked about nulls, no one talked about nulls. Now people are starting to pay attention to them. Um, and I've been talking with the team actually, um, talking to uh, the community manager, and uh, they're telling there's big things. They're preparing for their test net. Right, and right after a test net, it's going to be their main net. They're concentrating on that, but they're also going to be doing a big marketing push afterwards. They just want to make sure that the product product is there first before doing a huge marketing push. I have not looked at credits yet. I think I might do that uh, this weekend. I know that it's still being pushed. A lot of people are saying. It's split. Some people are saying credits is they're just too early. They're trying to fix their code. Um, and some people say it's, you know, they can't do what they're doing. You know, we'll have to see. Uh, so I haven't looked at, I haven't looked at credits yet. Uh, I do not speak Spanish. <laughs> I, I do speak a little in Chinese. Uh, theta. Theta is, I like Theta. I mean, they have crazy advisors, right? You got co-founder of YouTube. You got um, the founder of Twitch. You got these guys that are, that's been in the streaming industry for a long time, right? That's advising their project. So that's good. But the project is not going to be done until 2019. So there's not that much to look for in 2018. That's the only thing. Um, but in terms of like a decentralized video streaming platform, they, they have to be the leader. I know there's a few other smaller players in it, um, but you know, when you have an advisory team like that, it's, it's insane. You can't ignore that. Um, what do I think about Marius? That's the person I, I didn't want to speak, you know, call him out by name, but that's who I refer to as crypto Jesus. Um, everyone, right. Everyone that that claims to be like perfect with their charts is lying to you okay um he actually banned me from twitter and i just asked a simple question because prior to a few weeks ago he made a big deal about how the market was going to drop to 76 30 on a specific friday and i forgot about which friday it was and he said that sold it hard um and then days before you know bitcoin was uh going up uh on a thursday i tweeted him and said hey you still think it's going to drop down to 7630 when and that time Bitcoin was already like at 10,000 and he just banned me for that, right? And anyone that calls him out on it and said, hey, what happened? He either bans him or set claims that he didn't do it. But there's plenty of screenshots that show that, right? Um, so again, I don't want to be too too down on, on charge with TA people, but he was going to extreme where he would pinpoint to exact like day and almost exact time. And that's just impossible to do. When the market um, th this volatile and this easy to manipulate, there's really no way you can time it that accurately, right? Unless you're the one that's actually driving it and you can actually manipulate the market yourself, which then it's a different story. But I mean, I have nothing against him. It's just that, you know, what he was uh, selling a little bit too hard that he can predict things that accurately. Uh, Taft, I just talked about Black Court. Um, Storm, I like Storm too because they're advisors and they're in the micro jobs market. Um, they need to come out their platform right now, whatever they have. The Storm 
app is more for like buying things, which is great, but there's too much competitiveness, um, competitors in that space. They need to come out with their next app, which is really the micro gigs, micro jobs, and that, that'll really push them. I haven't looked into the key just yet. Got a couple of people saying all cryptos is a pyramid scheme, right? And then someone else is saying Bitcoin is a positive scheme. Um, no and no. If you guys really think so, I don't know why you're in in here watching it, watching me. Where are my thoughts on RDD? I don't like RDD at all. Uh, they're one of those old coins that did nothing. They announced something big. And it's not really even big, and it just shot them through a roof. <sighs> yeah, there's a good amount of people today. There is. Do I play basketball? I do. Um, I'm way I, – I used to play basketball all the time, but not so much anymore, and I've gained a lot of weight, unfortunately. <sighs> Let me check something real quick. Oops. Bitcoin private. No, I'm not going to talk about Bitcoin private. I've said any fork of Bitcoin is just it's ridiculous. Just don't even look at them. They, they have they serve no purpose. Right. Other than Bitcoin Cash, and even then, I don't like Bitcoin Cash because of Roger Beer. But you know what? Um, all these other stuff: Bitcoin Dark, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Private, Bitcoin X. You shouldn't even think about those. <clears throat> um, man, you guys really care about my health, huh? No, I, I'm still sick. That's why I've, I've been stiffling more than usual. Um, I don't give gi giveaways. I don't know why. I mean, I think that's some, somewhat gimmicky. A lot of people always do these giveaways, especially Ty Lopez. Those of you guys watch Ty Lopez who kind of tried to break into cryptocurrency. It's like every one of his videos, the start of videos, like I'm giving away a stack of cash or I'm giving away an iPhone. I mean, that, but that – that's so gimmicky. Like that's the only reason why people are tuning in. And even some other people that that you know say you know put put your Bitcoin address in the comments and then they do a random draw. Again, that seems like that's the only reason why people are watching them. Then right. So that's why I don't really want to give give giveaways. But if, if you guys really want to give away, I can think of something. Do I hold uh, Tron anymore? No, I sold Tron when when they were being pumped, and I told people to get out around 17 cents or something. Um, that's when I got out too, and I've been waiting for a bottom, and they've just been going lower and lower. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, what else? Block Mason. Um, I haven't looked into Block Mason that much. I like their concept of tracking debt, but along with everything else, they've been hammered. Um, man, they're cheap. They're only at 28 million right now in market cap. Uh, I remember they were much, much higher. Recently, they've been pumped a few times. I noticed on Binance, they went up and down, up and down. But overall, I think I think it's a decent idea. It's not, I don't know, it's it's not really, really something that I think will really take off. It's, you know, to have an app to to simply track that. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know what I feel about that. Yeah, when do I think the, the dip will stop? This is going to be hard. This is, you know, when you got a lot of whales that's kind of manipulating the market right now and kind of, you know, dictating the price action, but it's really hard to say when things will stop. So I said in the beginning of the video, really, the key strategy is you want to keep 
a lot of cash on hand, right? And of course, do the right um, to make, know when to cost average, when to buy in on the dips, when, you know, make sure your portfolio is, the por portfolio allocation is correct. And that's really the only thing you can do, right? And, and play it smart, obviously, um, you know, take advantage of all the people that, uh, you know, that that's educating guys on this. And, um, and that's the only thing you can really do right now. Am I a secret whale? No, I wish I was. No, I'm not. All right. Uh, to avoid market manipulation, do we need some kind of regulation or centralized global crypto union? No, no, we don't. I mean, you, you guys got to realize, right, the, the reason why it can be manipulated is because basically there's not that much money in it, all right? So one of the things you guys got to realize is even though the market shows that we're at around $400 billion, there's not $400 billion in the market, okay? Um, the prices go up. It's all supply and demand, right? And I don't know the exact, exact number that's in it. But we have seen where if you put in a billion into a coin or you take out a billion, it will cause the price to go a lot more than a billion up or a lot more than a billion down. OK, so overall, the market is so small that any serious whale. Right. I'm not even. No, I shouldn't even say serious whale. Just just a decent whale. OK, we're not even talking about the hedge funds, institutional investors that control billion we're talking about just people that have you know 50 100 million they can easily easily manipulate any altcoin okay and even bitcoin so you know what the stock market gets manipulated too but when they do that it takes a lot lot more money right it's just that the crypto market is so small it's easily manipulated you could have someone like jeff bezos okay that could buy out basically the entire cryptocurrency market if you wanted to with cash he could easily do that so that's that just shows you how small the market is that one person in the world can simply buy out all the coins if they wanted to so that's the reason i mean just have regulation and stuff on exchanges i do agree that's that that kind of makes it a bit safer right so that these exchanges um, they don't get hacked uh, as much and there's no shadiness going on inside and especially like you know stable coins like tether if there was regulations on tether then you can actually know whether or not that these audits that show they have two billion in cash is real like right now you don't know um so in terms of regulations it'll help with those things but in terms of market manip manipulation it's not gonna help that the only thing that's gonna help is that the market just goes up to a point where once we're in the trillions it's, it just becomes a lot harder to manipulate. That's pretty much it. David, how do you keep cash on hand if you put all your cash in the market? Well, you have to make the hard decision. You either have to put more money in, right? Or keep more money on the side to be able to buy in, or you have to sell off some of it and take a loss. And it's a hard decision both ways because when the market's down, no one wants to put more money in. Um, that's where the fear comes in and no one wants to sell because they don't want to take that loss. But that's that's something that you guys have to decide. There's really no other option to get cash, right? I don't know where this <laughs> this chat went. Every single animal on Earth lays eggs. OK, what does that have to do with cryptocurrency? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what do I think about Mobius? I don't know. I, I never looked at Mobius. Let, let me take a look real quick. Mobius, thirty-one million in market cap. It's is not trading in any good exchange. Uh, connecting the world to blockchain ecosystem. Protocol for connecting consumer applications and high fidelity oracles to the blockchain economy. All right. So it looks like it looks like it's connecting 
real world applications into blockchain. So they have a picture about Alibaba, WeChat, and Airbnb, goes through a Mobius platform and it connects to Bitcoin, smart contracts, Stellar Lumens. So basically it sounds like, you know what? It kind of sounds like a chain link competitor. And it probably is a chain link competitor because that's what chain link does. So um I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good, I like Chainlink for that idea, but Chainlink is much bigger, and plus Mobius right now is it's not being, you know, traded on a decent exchange. It's not a stellar exchange, but that's about it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I would not recommend that coin right now. Bull run coming, Coinbase will shut down again. Okay, what makes you say that? Do you think Bitcoin mining will ever be profitable again? You know what? Yes. You know, the reason why, okay, I want to tell you guys a story that I lost respect in John McAfee because of all the things that he was trying to uh, pump and it, it didn't work out. And now he kind of changed, especially with Verge, right? We saw with Verge. So there was something going on with Verge where, you know, he, he says some stuff, made it pump, and then he asked for a million dollars. He didn't get it. It got ugly, right? And then, uh, and then he kind of stopped it. He, he still does uh, uh, ICOs and stuff, but then some of the ICOs that he's been tweeting are very, very shady, okay? Um, so, but other, but one thing is, like, he John McAfee sounds so elegant in his interviews. If you guys watch his interviews with, I saw one, I don't even know when, maybe a year ago, um, with Larry King on YouTube. It, when he speaks on public TV or these interviews, he speaks so well. He, I mean, he is truly um, eloquent. That's the best way I could put it. But anyways, he he was talking about mining, right? And the I think Larry King or someone was asking him, hey, why, why do you think Bitcoin will go up to a million dollars? Why do you think it'll continue to keep going up? And this is what he shared. And I, some of you guys might think this is obvious, but it really applies. He's like, Think about right now, Bitcoin is, there's a finite number, we're around 17 million, right? And But think about when we get to the last 10, right? Um, so Bitcoin is pretty much mined out. There's only 10 left. He's like at that point, and now come in like 10 or 15 years from now. That's not anytime soon, but he's like, at that point, you gotta realize that miners around the world are paying billions, okay? in electricity costs, in the hardware, in manpower, whatever, right? They're paying billions to mine these last 10 coins. And do you really think miners are going to be spending that much to mine something that doesn't even have more value? He's like, at that point, each Bitcoin can be hundreds of millions to billions to even trillions. That's why people would be willing to spend billions to mine it, right? And I thought about that, right? Maybe trillions, you know, billions and stuff like that is way, way out there, right? But you got to think, you got all these people that's mining it. And even short term, maybe they're not profiting, right? And when Bitcoin dips, you know, obviously their profits go down. Um, but they continue to mine. You don't hear about these Chinese miners or Icelandic miners shutting down their mining operations, right? Because they're mining for the future. They know this is... Right now, there might be dips, right? But you hold on to those bitcoins in five to ten years, they're gonna be way, they're gonna be worth way, way more. So, in terms of mining profitability, even though you want to make a profit now to sustain yourself and grow, but really everyone's mining is because the future potential, not for right now. So, to answer your question, um, yes, it is profitable and. Um, and what John McAfee says just makes a lot of sense, right? You got, like, even today, you have miners around the world that's probably paying, you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands a month to maintain their mining operation. Uh, maybe even millions, maybe even like, you know, uh, Bitman or so on, Bitmain, right? Maybe they do pay more, but uh, they're doing it because they believe in it. And you, when you have this many people believe in something, uh, the, the demand is always going to be there. So that's why Bitcoin is not going to go away. 
totally on drugs. He's always on drugs. That might be true. <laughs> that might be true. But when he's talking on TV, he he, man, he can uh, he can really talk. Which AI project to buy into? Well, um, there's a lot of companies that claim they have AI, right? Whether or not they really have AI, I don't know. Syndicator is probably the closest, right? Using AI and market data to kind of predict the markets. Um, again, I don't know how, you know, how much, how intelligent these AI are, because if you have enough people giving you data, you can make a pretty good guess at it without having AI involved, right? So I don't know uh, much about how advanced these AIs are, but I would say Syndicator is probably the leader in that. <clears throat> what do I think about Cardano? I, you know what, Cardano is just Cardano. It's like you can't, you can't really say anything bad about them without really, you know, without really pissing everyone off. But um, they're led by a good leader, right? They have a large team. They're cranking away, and uh, but they're they're not going to be ready this year, right? Um, you got EOS that's coming out this year. A lot of people are excited about that. You got other players that's coming out that has come out, like Ardor, which has not moved at all, but they're not doing themselves any favors right now. Um, and then, you know, Neo's kind of um, establishing its ground. Um, you know, you got new players, obviously, like Nulls, that's also released their mainnet. So you got a lot of players coming out this year, right? And you got also like Zekilla that's that's try you know with their sharding that's gonna be something. Um, you got a lot of platform coins out there. So Cardano is still a leader. A lot of people are looking forward to it, but just nothing kind of coming out this year. You gotta wait until 2019. Why did McAfee sell his mining facility? He didn't. When did he announce that? He never sold. He's still running his uh, mining facility. <clears throat> Tether up, no. Uh, loop ring. I heard loop ring was being pumped right now. Uh, let's see what they are. Yeah, they're starting going up, uh, but they're way off. They're still way off from before. But loop ring, I've always liked loop, loop ring, right? Because I know their competitor is Zero X. They're in the. They're coming out of the. They're basically they have a protocol for decentralized exchanges. Uh, they're ERC-20 based right now, meaning they're trying to work on Ethereum. But the biggest thing is they're they're close with NEO and Quantum, but more importantly with NEO, right? So um, they already announced they're going to come out the Loop Ring protocol for NEO's platform and also Quantum, and they're going to be doing airdrops with that. I think that's really going to help drive the price up. And ultimately, any company that's close with NEO is going to be doing well because NEO is really kind of standing out now. You hear a lot more companies moving to NEO, more ICOs being conducted on them. But, you know, there's still some controversy about their seven seven uh, consensus nodes and how they don't have that much smart contracts yet. Uh, you just got to give them time. But I really like Loop Ring. <clears throat> Man, a lot of people are tuning in. Almost 1,200 people. Yeah, I'm looking at Bitcoin right now. It's still 8,700, a little bit off. Then we got up, got up to about 9,200 9, this morning, 9,100. Coming back down, but let's see. It's holding right now at 8,700. <clears throat> I like Telcoin. I do like how they're, they're trying to come up with a currency for... Uh, telecom vendors and they go tackle remittance that way and tackle user adoption. So I like that. Um, yeah, more questions about nuclear vision. Yeah, I, I do. Nucleus vision, I say not nuclear. Uh, I do like them. Uh, Tron, no. I, I sold Tron when it was uh, around 17 cents. Uh, George, you mentioned IDO before. Is this wallet doing altcoins, and are they working on a desktop wallet? Yes, actually, I think they just released a desktop wallet. Um, I, I I like IDO again, another one that's really under the radar. Not much people are talking about them. Um, everyone's talking about Ethos, but IDO has a universal wallet, right? The only thing really lacking is they don't have a Bitcoin wallet because they decided to do ERC twenty right now, but. 
they support all ERC. Um, they do that. They have their ICO engine. So if you participate in ICOs, it just gets dropped in your wallet. They're also working on desktop stuff. Yeah. And uh, their hybrid exchange is coming out pretty soon. So that's going to be exciting. That's going to be integrated in directly into their app too. Smash the likes button. Yes, please hit the likes buttons. I'll also uh, use this. I haven't used this in a while. Uh, I covered play, play to live ICO. Yeah, they seem like a, a really, really good ICO. I know they've done really well with their token sale, their pre sale. I think. Raised seven, uh, 18 million. It's, it was a lot. I didn't check what their main sale was, but they seem like they're on top of it. What about the weed coins? Um, you know what? They've been hammered. I still, ever since I covered Tokes, TKS, and they're really under radar, I really like them because. Um, First of all, they're really cheap, and second of all, if you look at some of the partnerships they're playing, they're they've made, especially with their ERP system and so forth, they're all on the back end, right? They're less they're less concentrated on consumers. They're more concentrated on the back end companies that actually work in that industry. So I really like Tokes. So I still hold Tokes. As for uh, Hempcoin and Dopecoin, there's been a lot of just chatter about what they're going to do, but I don't see much being done, so I don't hold them anymore. But I still think, you know what, they've been, they all got hammered, just like all the other small caps, okay? Um, but once we start hearing more about partnerships, um, then they'll start bringing it up. Obviously, the market has to come back first. Um, Snowbio, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're CRM, right? They're competing with Salesforce. I don't see them gaining any traction anytime soon. I'm sorry. Yeah, OMG. I've always liked OMG. I mean, because I like companies that already have a product, right? So before Arby's Go, if you look into them, they already have Amis, which is kind of like a PayPal of South Southwest uh, Asia or South Southeast Asia. Um, and they were making hundreds of millions of dollars already. So they're layering in a new product. So those kind of companies is safe because they already have an existing company that's making a lot of money, right? So they're not just going to go belly up due to their new product. Yeah, I know it has a desktop wall. Yeah, I remember because I remember they said that. Um, I will say in terms of desktop wallet, I use Exodus a lot, and they also added a feature where basically before Exodus would only give you a wallet on things you could trade on Shapeshift, they changed that stance where you can now store all your ERC-20 based tokens on there too without being exchanged. I haven't tested an idle wallet yet. I want to test it because if it's any good, then I might switch to it. But right now, um, I haven't tested them yet. Uh, Zakilla, I, I talked about them a, a little bit. I think they're interesting. The only player that, that have done sharding successfully on the test net, their roadmap is pushed back a little bit because originally they were supposed to come out the test net already, and now they're coming out the main net, but they're, they're, they're just coming out their test net. So their main net's going to be delayed a little bit until later this year, but they, they sound very promising with sharding. Basically they, they take up all the nodes and separate them in different groups, and then the, they process different things and then combine it afterwards. Um, right now, they achieved about 2,500 transactions per second with, I think, 3,600 nodes, something around there. But it's one of those things where the more nodes there are, the more it scales. But obviously, this kind of numbers, it, I mean, it sounds impressive, right? A lot more than Ethereum or even Neo or Stellar or Ripple, but when you compare it to things like, um, I don't know, let's just say credits or HPP, where they're claiming a million transactions per second, I don't know. I mean, obviously, then it sounds a little very, very low, but um, I don't know if those other platforms could really handle that much or they're just blowing smoke. Chat. 
Charlie Lee thinks Neo is bad. You know what? I'm just going to go rant on Charlie Lee because I don't know what his deal is. You know, um, Charlie Lee seems to spread FUD sometimes. And then he comes back and says good things about other companies and so forth, right? So I think he should just concentrate more on Litecoin. That's my opinion, right? If I was a creator of a coin and uh, and I'm out there being an influencer, then I would spend more time talking about the coin I created. So I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get what his deal is. Yeah, what about this prick holding 181,000 Bitcoin? Are you talking about Roger Veer? <laughs> no, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's a scary thought to see what he's going to do with it. Um, Latham, the McAfee back. You know what? I, I've lost faith in any ICOs backed by McAfee because it's, it's clear that he will back any ICO. Um, that pays them a lot of money. Actually, a company came into me recently, wanted me to do a sponsor ICO, and I forgot the company name. The, the website and everything just looked really, really shady. And guess what? Who was advisor? McAfee. So uh, in my opinion, McAfee just really, he just takes the money, they put his name on there, and he tweets it a few times, that's it. He really does not advise them. Um, that's my opinion. So I would stay away from any ICO where it has McCaffrey listed as advisor. <clears throat> Komodo. Um, you know what? I haven't looked that much in Komodo. The only thing is, and this might be spreading FUD, is that you look at the team behind Komodo, and they, they've been in like six or seven cryptocurrency. And um, I think Bitcoin Dark, wait, which one was it? Um, what was their last project? Um, shoot, I forgot their last project. But basically, they keep bailing. They keep giving up. They keep coming out with a new coin. And, and really, Komodo is their last try. Because if they screw up Komodo again, I don't think they're going to gain any trust anymore. So that's the only thing. I haven't looked specifically in, into what Komodo actually does, um, but I know that their past history is not a good good, good one. <clears throat> Coinbase Index Fund, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, there's only four coins, right? How, how, how difficult is it to just put money in three of the four coins, right? Just, just follow... Put 50% of Bitcoin, 25% in Ethereum, 25% in Litecoin. That's it. Why Why do you need to pay Coinbase to manage that fund for you? I mean, you just do that. That's 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 going to be better than anything they could do. I'll guarantee you that. Yeah, what happened to WAN Chain not coming to exchange? That's the thing. WAN Chain has been so, like, I mean, everyone's talking about WAN Chain, about how good they are, right? And they're they're... They're in the news. They're making partnership. Like they made the, the alliance with Icon and the Aeon. And you hear about this, but they just never get listed. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I, I actually don't know what's holding them back. They could be just listed on any exchange. I'm sure KuCoin will take them. KuCoin pretty much takes any of these promising companies. You got Buybox. You got um, Hoibee. Hoibee is actually trying to do like a huge promotional thing. They keep reaching out to me saying they want me to help them advertise. So a lot of these exchanges are desperate for good coins. So I don't know. Maybe WanChan only wants to be on Binance. Not WanChan. WanChain. <laughs> I keep saying WanChan, but I don't. I don't know what's the deal. McCaffrey knows something though to make the millions predictions. Either that or he's not cocaine. They probably cocaine. Elastos. People get some vitamin C. Thank you. Uh, Elastos. I just know they cheated. But hey, we can look past that, I guess, right? Uh, I think I looked at I looked at Elastos a couple times. I forgot what they do again. Oh, this is the one I made fun of how their, their web page really sucks. You go to their web page, the first thing you see is EOA login. 
and the, and with the big button it says login. And then you have you have a video um, that is in Chinese that no one understands. Um, so they really suck at advertising. Uh, Smart web is a web of apps and dApps. We are creating an operating system for smart web. Okay. So I don't know if that means they're creating a, a framework or they're coming out with something else. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know enough about it, but I can tell you they cheated out of Binance competition and their marketing, their web page sucks. So uh, that's what I could tell you about it right now. Please add. Please stop asking a stupid question. No, there's no stupid question. Have you ever heard that there are no stupid questions? Actually, I disagree with that, but uh, do you think mass needles are a good investment? Um yes. Especially if you if you're running a master node, right? And especially if you're running it on a coin that ultimately is going up. It's like owning a house, right? It's like, you know what? If, if you're making money by running the master nodes, right, and the underlying coins that you're kind of staking to run the master nodes going up, then it's a win-win situation. Why wouldn't you want to do that? But most people can't afford to run master nodes. So they require, you know, 2,000, 20,000, 100,000 um, coins, and that's more than most people can put in. Who would win in a fight, Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash? I think that's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. You know what? You know, Roger, if you remind me of, um, if you guys ever watched that, uh, the Facebook movie, um, the character that uh, Justin Timberlake plays, the one part where they were kicking out, um, kicking out the partner uh, for Mark Zuckerberg, I forgot his name. And he he wanted to punch just um, Justin Timberlake, and he kind of like, you know, moved back. That's what Roger Veer reminds me of. Like he's probably the, you know, he, he's not gonna get in a fight with you. <laughs> yes, the sun is bothering me. Unfortunately, this office used to be kind of like a green room, and there's like a ton of windows in here. I gotta put some shades or something. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for someone that pointed that out. I guess you know there's there's someone that's trying to pretend to be be me, and they've been uh, they've been emailing people in my comments and stuff like that. It you know for me if I if you guys ever want to email me or if I reach out to you, it's gonna be my domain, right? George at cryptosrus.com. That's it. There's no Gmail or anything like that. So if you guys see anyone that's pretending to be me, then report them and block them immediately. Uh, Ethereum Classic, you know, Ethereum Classic has been hanging around. I've never been a fan of Ethereum Classic because I see they they can't offer anything Ethereum can, right? Um, there's no ICOs. There's really nothing that Ethereum Classic is doing to separate themselves other than they're just a cryptocurrency. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with Callisto. Um, they're introducing a new consensus, um, a new test net. And I know that they're kind of close with Charles uh, Hoskinson from uh, Cardano, but um, who knows? Maybe they form some kind of alliance in the future or something. That's the only thing I'm hopeful for. But as a platform coin, I, I just don't see any potential in them. When will Carl come back for a second interview? You know, my next interview... I'm just gonna pre-announce it. It's gonna be with uh, Steven Seagal, so you guys should look forward to that one. I I'm really looking forward to talking to, to Steven. Uh, Litecoin, yeah. You guys know, I, I love Litecoin, right? Litecoin, um, actually I should take that back. So last year, for a long time, I'll say that I wasn't a fan of Litecoin because I'm like, hey, I don't know. I don't see Litecoin doing anything. 
Um, and at that time, Charlie was promoting Bitcoin more than Litecoin. So really nothing. And then, um, and then all of a sudden he, he changed his tune. He's like, I'm going to start promoting Litecoin and it helped. And we saw a lot more movement and Litecoin uh, started getting going up in price. And all of a sudden, Charlie said he sold off his Bitcoins, I mean, Litecoins to a conflict of interest. And then that kind of stalled things, right? But now introducing Litepay, I think it's a really good thing. I think sooner or later, you go hear about a lot more merchants or big companies start using Litecoin as a payment. And then it will start moving up again. So I really like Litecoin in 2018. Um, what are my thoughts about Populous and Kyber Network? Um, oh, that's a tough one. That's a neutral. Okay, so Kyber Network, I, I get their their exchange. So I, I did a, I kind of did a video about it, right? At the time, I didn't know because I tried to make a, I tried to execute a trade, and I didn't know you had to be, you had to participate in ICO before you could do that. Um, it, I, I guess Kyber is, I don't know, I'm kind of neutral. It's, I do like their setup, but they're really not, um, they're not decentralized, right? So they're kind of still like a centralized uh, liquidity exchange where they're trying to make it super simple, right? And I, I think if I remember correctly, Kyber also allows people to, uh, to put in their coins to be sold. I think that was Kyber. Uh, unless I'm thinking about that was salt, but um, but yeah, I'm not so I'm not a big fan of Kyber. I'll just say I'm neutral on them in terms of populars, in terms of selling your invoices or crowdfunding invoices. Um, I think that's a unique idea. I've not I don't know how big of a problem that is, so that's why I can't speak much about it. But obviously, a lot of people are really excited about populars because it's it's been moving up a lot and. At one point, it was at like $2 billion. Now it's about $500 million. Um, it's still doing well. Circulating supply is quite low at $34 million. Um, and you know what? I used to I used to watch Shark Tank, so I know that a lot of people go on, ask the sharks to you know pay for their invoices because they simply don't have enough funds to do so. So that's where I think Populous can really help uh, companies like that in those situations. But um, I don't know in the real world outside cryptocurrency if those companies already exist or if crowdfunding platforms exist. But I think it's a good concept. Um, it's just that I don't know how many people are going to be using it for now. Is Superman a scammer? No. Superman, you know, I, I, I defended Superman. You know, when Doug Polk attacked Superman, I thought that was overboard. A lot of people disagreed. They thought that was warranted, but... No, I, I like Superman. I think he, you know what? I think he's a marketer. You know, he's a marketer first, uh, cryptocurrency um, uh, educator or influencer second. He's definitely a marketer, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's how he makes his money. Uh, he didn't make some mistakes, obviously. Um, but uh, overall, I think he, he does a good job educating. And he, he is actually the first guy I started watching on YouTube in terms of cryptocurrency. So... Uh, I do like Superman. He's not a scammer. He just made some mistakes in the past. Let's just put it that way. Uh, where's Ty Lopez now? You know that his recent his recent commercials have shifted to real estate. Shows him in like a middle of a like a cornfield, right? And he says he purchased like thirty acres of land or something. I think he tried cryptocurrency really hard. Then cryptocurrency tanked, and now he's trying to get out. So unfortunately, Ty Lopez is a master marketer. Um, I was really jealous in terms of how he uh, promoted himself and made himself, you know, multimillionaire. But now his like antics don't really work on YouTube anymore. Um, and Facebook banned uh, cryptocurrency ads, so he can't, you know, advertise on Facebook. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if you continue his. Uh, his marketing shenanigans. No, my wife does not invest in crypto. There's no point. If I'm investing in it, why would she invest in it, right? I think Ty rented that mansion, but I think he bought it now. I mean, he he clearly could afford it. I know he likes to, like, all his Lambos and everything, his Bentleys, Ferraris are all leased. But he does the guy, the dude definitely has money, right? Let's let's not kid ourselves. He made millions upon millions with his program. So 
Um, he's not begging for food off the street. Let's let's say that for sure. Um, uh, Aeon or Ripple? I like Ripple. Um, you can't deny the fact that Ripple is is just it's it's on a tear. Okay, in terms of all the partnerships, um, in terms of if you look at like all the cryptocurrencies out there in terms of the one that have made the most partnerships in the real world, it has to be Ripple. They already have 60 banks utilizing Ripple. I just announced yesterday they will come out with a mobile app, right? So they have 60 banks that's on board with it. They, they have MoneyGram and Western Union, arguably the two largest remittance companies in the world, testing it out, Ripple. And they have other companies testing out Ripple. Ripple is truly the one cryptocurrency that has the most adoption right now. Unfortunately, Ripple was overbought, okay, right before all this came out. They were extremely overbought, and CNBC and everyone else jumped in on it, got everyone to get in on it, and that's why it came down. But unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, that kind of screwed things up for them. But you, you can't. Uh, Ripple is making all the right moves. And the fact that they're centralized and all that stuff, that – you know what? Um, it is what it is, right? They're not going to change, but that doesn't change the fact that they're still working with all these large companies. Yeah, that's true. Not everything in Ripple requires XRP. That is true, but the company is still making money, right? So they're not just relying on XRP to make money. And once you have a company hooked on to one of your products, right? It's much easier to convince them to do to try out another one of your products. So it doesn't matter. So all those banks, those sixty plus banks, probably is not using XRP right now, but they're working with Ripple, and maybe down the road they want to do something else, and Ripple can say, "Hey, here's one of our other products that does use XRP." Right. So that's the thing. As long as you form that partnership and get them hooked first on something, that's the important thing: is to get these companies. Trust me, getting getting customers is hard. And when you're trying to sign up large, large enterprise customers, that's even harder. So the fact that they have done so is really good. Man, this sun is killing me. This this sun is really killing me. Um, yeah, I think this uh, I think this live session went on long enough. But we still got yeah, still got a thousand people watching. This is about this is, this is over an hour. It's getting uh, the questions are repeating now. Um, yeah, should you stick a looter? I still like them. I know they're not going to take over Wikipedia overnight. I know that, but it's another. It's another interesting. They could turn out to be like uh, Steam. It um, probably take a few years, but it's a competitor of Wikipedia. I still like them. Rockets or Warriors? Warriors. Okay. Harden is go choke in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, can you talk about nulls? I think I talk about nulls. I don't want to come off like I only want to pump nulls. Okay, nulls is a very underrated uh, generation three modular platform coin. Right, there's not that many in this space, and they're extremely underrated. Uh, below the radar, they have a huge price potential. The, the team is hardworking. I've been talking with the team, and they're trying to come out. They're working hard to come out the test net and the main net, and then they know they have a marketing problem. And then afterwards, they will do a complete marketing campaign to kind of spread the word. <sighs> Sorry for those that live in Houston, but it's true. Harden can't perform under pressure. Uh, market done dropping. It looks like that way right now. Um, we'll have to see. But like I said at the beginning of the video, those of you guys that joined late, you should probably watch the beginning once I get this uploaded. But really, right now, what you want to do is make sure to have cash on hand. I know that's hard for a lot of people because you guys, a lot of people went all in on cryptos and you're holding and you're in the red. But right now is really when there's uncertainty and we have sideways movements and we have large dips where Bitcoin goes from you know 11,500 all the way down to 8,000 and now it's kind of recovering you want to have cash on hand right um, and you got to make a tough decision whether or not you go put more money into the market or 
you have to sell off some of the stuff that you own to get that cash. It, there's no there's no other way around it, right? Um, obviously, you still want to practice the other strategies such as having a, the right portfolio uh, district, uh, allocation, right? Don't go too much in small caps right now. You definitely want to put the 50% in uh, Bitcoin, 25% in uh, big caps, and then the 25% the in small cap. You can even decrease that right now, right? Even go down to 20, 15, 10%. To kind of safeguard yourself during uncertain times but really the ultimate thing is you want to get cash that that's that's how you go take advantage of the situation the potential nulls is huge okay i'm not i'm not okay that's that's the reason why i recommended them with an insider because once i looked into them and it wasn't easy to discover them right it was just me randomly kind of going through all these coins and I found that I'm like, no one is talking about them and they have huge potential. This is kind of like, um, com you know, comparing like when you found Neil when it was like a few dollars, right? That's kind of the thing. Um, so, yeah. I'm scary. What? In a good way or a bad way? <laughs> I was I was sit over here. All right, all right, guys. I'm burning out from the sun here, so I'm going to uh, end this. Thanks, thanks for you guys for joining in. Today was actually really good. The last few AMAs was only like you know 400, 500 people. Today it got up to 1,200. Now it's still 957. Um, so let me end with this. Um, just like my canvas back there, my sign back there, just hold it, right? So if you're in the cryptocurrency space, and most people that are following me, um, I know that you guys are long-term holders, and so am I, right? So that's what it comes down to. You got to – it's very, very hard. Um, like for me, for example, I can't get away from a market, right? I can't just shut it down because this is what I do now. I have to educate you guys. I have to find new coins. I have to look at the price action, the price movement every day. But for those of you guys that are not in this full time, um, you, sometimes you just gotta really get away, right? Um, I know many of you guys are checking, you know, prices on your phone nonstop every minute because that's pretty much what I do, right? You just gotta get away with it because it, psychologically, it's gonna destroy you every time you second guess yourself. Every time you think that you buy something it goes down every time you don't buy it goes up and you're thinking that non-stop all day every day you guys got to get away from that if you're long-term holders you got to make a you just got to make a conscious effort to say hey you know what I, I checked it this morning or i checked it at night the rest of the day i'm going to ignore it or i ignore it for tomorrow or the next day especially if you don't have any more cash to put in what's the point right don't don't uh you really got to get away uh, get the get the fun out of you, right? And you'll feel much better. Um, it's easier said than done, but really that's what you need to do. But those of you guys that are actively trading, right? Then obviously you got to play it smart. Um, you got to you got to act almost like a robot and take emotions out, which is again very hard. But that's what you got to do. Um, and that's the only way you go thrive. But ultimately, these little dips here and there for the last you know two months. Is on the grand scheme of things, is nothing, okay? At the end of 2018, I'll guarantee you guys, you won't even remember this, because we'll be at $6 trillion. And at the end of 2019, and then 2020, let's just say five years from now, right? To uh, 2020, uh, 2023. Man, the market's gonna be at like 20 trillion, okay? 30 trillion, at that time, this, this, you know, these few hundred drops is going to be nothing. Bitcoin at that time will be like, you know, 500000 or a million dollars or $5 million. I mean, this is go on a grand scheme of things, this is nothing. Just look at, just think about this, okay? The easiest way to think about this is um, look at look at how, how, um, how slow the stocks move, okay? Besides some high flyers, tech stocks, you know, like Amazon or Netflix or whatever, you look at, other companies that um, that have been around, right? Like oil companies or um, 
re, uh, retailers is bad because they're all doing that bad. But you just look at normal companies or even some tech companies or uh, manufacturing companies or, um, or whatever, right? In a year, they move, you know what, 5%, 10%. Maybe in a good year, they move 25 30%, right? Um, so that's how slow the market is people get in cryptocurrency they get addicted right obviously people got into december january got really addicted to these thousand percent gains every every uh every week and stuff like that but um but you know obviously if things go up that much they come down that that fast too right but if you're looking at the long game right now right let's say you whatever you have you're holding you stop looking at it you come back in three months six months 12 months i'll guarantee you that the you know, all the stuff that you have will be at all time highs and even higher. And the gains will still will be tremendously more than than some of those stocks I talked about, right? So that's how you gotta play it. Play the long game, right? Don't try to don't don't try to fret like all these small price movements, especially when you don't have to, right? Like someone like me, I have to. This is what I do. But for those of you guys that are casual investor, casual holders, um, you're in it for long haul. Don't sweat about this. Just just ignore it. Get away from it. Don't you know? Make a routine where you're getting out or whatever. Stop checking your phone. Just hold for a long term. All right, guys. That's it. I'm gonna end with that. I am sweating profusely now, so I'm gonna get off this uh, live session. Make sure you guys are tuning in. Unfortunately, I gotta figure out why I can't screen share. It goes to black, so uh, I'll figure it out before next time. All right, guys. All right, uh, hopefully you guys hit all the likes and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Just wondering what the hell's going on. And really, there's no, there's no explanation for it. There's no fun news coming out today, no governments coming out saying they're banning exchanges or banning Bitcoin or anything like that. There's nothing like that going on today. Um, it, you know what? This is really, you know, you have to chalk it up to something where there's big players, big whales behind the scene that is basically, right? And all these, all these TA guys, they're coming out in the woodwork saying, you know what? I predicted it. I predicted we're going to go down, right? Um, not, not to this extent. Um, there's a lot of TAs, a lot of charts that say it can happen, this could happen, or this could happen. But when something drastically happens to this extent, like within a, that short of a time period, there's something else going on. And we've seen now, right, from the Mt. Gox trustee, when he's selling 10,000, 18,000 Bitcoins at a time in the open market, that's going to make things tank. Okay, not just from himself, but everyone else. And the market will see it and they follow through right and who knows what kind of insiders um they actually know about that ahead of time that plans it accordingly so you know i just think that something else happened yesterday behind the scenes that we don't know about so all we could do is play it safe play it smart and then and then go from there All right, so let's get to questions. I mean, I can't show you guys anything, so but I'll, I'll definitely look it up while you guys are asking it. All right, so let's see. Chris has gotten crypto in December. People said I missed the big movements and gains. I don't think we are done yet. Yeah, I don't think so. Of course we're not done. If we were done, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? Uh, no, it's definitely not done. We're going to reach all-time highs, right? Um, like I've been saying for a while now, we're we're two months in, really. You know, two months in, um, or I should say three months in, the year is still young, okay? If you look at last year's performance, most of the gains from last year really started second half of the year. And the last quarter of last year is where things went insane, right? There's plenty of time. So we're still early. We're coming out of our lows, right? And we now know why we have our lows. And it drove a lot of people out. But now the, the, it's here to stay. Like you, like you guys have been seeing in my videos, I've been pointing out all these 
companies, big companies that's adopting blockchain. That's not going to go away. And when companies have block, adopt blockchain, the, the cryptocurrencies go follow. There's no way. Happy Friday. I am in my new office. The construction that you guys heard in the background, this is uh, what it was, what people were building. <laughs> hey, Vancouver. You guys like those signs? Yeah, I converted my my uh, Lambo garage for my office. Uh, all right, let's give it a few more minutes before we get started. Yeah. Hey, Philadelphia. No, the office is too small for a bar. All right. I think most of you guys are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today's uh, AMA Friday. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What you know? What what the hell happened yesterday? Right after my video, actually. Hopefully. I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Right after my video yesterday, from Bitcoin fell from like uh, almost 10,000 directly down to 9,500. And then 9,500 fell down to 9,000. 9,000 fell down all the way up down to 8,100 before kind of bouncing back up to around 9,000 right now. So, um, hey guys, those of you guys join in, welcome. Um, yeah, so before we get to the questions, let's uh, let's talk about what's going on today. Today there's really not much. Okay, so I think I want to bring up I want to bring up this again. Uh, let me switch my views. Hold on. So I want to bring this up again because I feel like this is important, right? This is not go go away anytime soon. Um, so the question. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Lancy. I think that's how you pronounce it. Good morning. Happy Friday. I am in my new office. The construction that you guys heard in the background, this is uh, what it was, what people were building. <laughs> hey, Vancouver. You guys like those signs? Yeah, I converted my my uh, Lambo garage for my office. Uh, all right, let's give it a few more minutes before we get started. Yeah. Hey, Philadelphia. No, the office is too small for a bar. All right. 
think most of you guys are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today's uh, AMA Friday. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What you know? What what the hell happened yesterday? Right after my video, actually. Hopefully, I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Right after my video yesterday, from Bitcoin fell from like uh, almost ten thousand directly down to ninety five hundred. And then 9,500 fell down to 9,000. 9,000 fell down all the way up down to 8,100 before kind of bouncing back up to around 9,000 right now. So, um, hey guys, those of you guys join in, welcome. Um, yeah, so before we get to the questions, let's, uh, let's talk about what's going on today. Today there's really not much, okay? So I think I want to bring up... I want to bring up this again. Uh, let me switch my views. Hold on. I am in my new office. The construction that you guys heard in the background. This is uh, what it was. What people were building. <laughs> hey, Vancouver. You guys like those signs? <laughs> yeah, I converted my my uh, Lambo garage for my office. <sighs> All right, let's give it a few more minutes before we get started. Yeah. Hey, Philadelphia. No, the office is too small for a bar. All right. I think most of you guys are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today's uh, AMA Friday. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What you know? What what the hell happened yesterday? Right after my video, actually. Hopefully. I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Right after my video yesterday, from Bitcoin fell from like uh, almost 10,000 directly down to 9,500. And then 9,500 fell down to 9,000. 9,000 fell down all the way up down to 8,100 before kind of bouncing back up to around 9,000 right now. So, um, hey guys, those of you guys join in, welcome. Um, yeah, so before we get to the questions, let's uh, let's talk about what's going on today. Today there's really not much. Okay, so I think I want to bring up I want to bring up this again. Uh, let me switch my views. Hold on. So I want to bring this up again because I feel like this is important, right? This is not go go away anytime soon. Um, so the question now is on everyone's minds: is like, what what what's going on, right? Uh, the trustee already made back the four hundred million that that they owe to creditors, right? And they have sold that. So now what are the next steps? There's talk. Smash the likes button. Yes, please hit the likes buttons. I'll also. Uh, Use this. I haven't used this in a while. Uh, I covered play, play to live ICO. Yeah, they seem like a, a really, really good ICO. I know they've done really well with their token sale, their pre sale. I think raised seven, uh, 18 million. It's, it was a lot. I didn't check what their main sale was, but they seem like they're on top of it. What about the weed coins? Um, you know what? They've been hammered. I still, ever since I covered Tokes, TKS, 
and they're really under radar. I really like them because, um, the, first of all, they're really cheap, and second of all, if you look at some of the partnerships they're playing, they're they've made, especially with their ERP system and so forth, they're all on the back end, right? They're less they're less concentrated on consumers. They're more concentrated on the back end companies that actually work in that industry. So I really like Tokes. So I still hold Tokes. As for uh, Hempcoin and Dopecoin, there's been a lot of just chatter about what they're going to do, but I don't see much being done. So I don't hold them anymore. But I still think, you know what, they've been, they all got hammered, just like all the other small caps, okay? Um, but once we start hearing more about partnerships, um, then they'll start bringing it up. Obviously, the market has to come back first. Um, Snowbio, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're CRM, right? They're competing with Salesforce. I don't see them gaining any traction anytime soon. I'm sorry. Yeah, OMG. I've always liked OMG. I mean, because I like companies that already have a product, right? So before Arby's Go, if you look into them, they already have Amis, which is kind of like a PayPal of South Southwest uh, Asia or South Southeast Asia, um, and they were making hundreds of millions of dollars already. So they're layering in a new product. So those kind of companies is safe because they already have an existing company that's making a lot of money, right? So they're not just gonna go belly up due to their new product. Yeah, I know has a desktop wall. Yeah, I remember because I remember they said that. Um, I will say in terms of desktop wallet, I use Exodus a lot, and they also added a feature where basically before Exodus would only give you a wallet on things you could trade on Shapeshift, they changed that stance where you covered play, play to live ICO. Yeah, they seem like a, a really, really good ICO. I know they've done really well with their token sale, their pre-sale, I think raised seven, uh, 18 million. It's, it was a lot. I didn't check what their main sale was, but they seem like they're on top of it. What about the weed coins? Um, you know what? They've been hammered. I still, ever since I covered Tokes, TKS, and they're really under radar, I really like them because, um, the, first of all, they're really cheap. And second of all, if you look at some of the partnerships they're play, they're, they've made, especially with their ERP system and so forth, they're all on the back end, right? They're less, they're less concentrated on consumers. They're more concentrated on the back end companies that actually work in that industry. So I really like Tokes. So I still hold Tokes. As for uh, Hempcoin and Dopecoin, there's been a lot of just chatter about what they're going to do, but I don't see much being done. So I don't hold them anymore. But I still think, you know what, they've been, they all got hammered, just like all the other small caps. Okay. Um, but once we start hearing more about partnerships, um, then they'll start bringing it up. Obviously, the market has to come back first. Um, Snowbio, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're CRM, right? They're competing with Salesforce. I don't see them gaining any traction anytime soon. I'm sorry. Yeah, OMG. I've always liked OMG. I mean, because I like companies that already have a product, right? So before Arby's Go, if you look into them, they already have Arby's, which is kind of like a PayPal of South Southwest uh, Asia or South Southeast Asia. Um, and they were making hundreds of millions of dollars already. So they're layering in a new product. So those kind of companies is safe because they already have an existing company that's making a lot of money, right? So they're not just going to go belly up due to their new product. Yeah, I know it has a desktop wall. Yeah, I remember because I remember they said that. Um, I will say in terms of desktop wallet, I use Exodus a lot. And they also added a feature where basically before Exodus would only give you a wallet on things you could trade on Shapeshift. They changed that stance where you can now store all your ERC-20 based tokens on there too without being exchanged. 
I haven't tested the Idol Wallet yet. I want to test it because if it's any good, then I might switch to it. But right now, um, I haven't tested them yet. Uh, Zakilla. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Lancy. I think that's how you pronounce it. Good morning. Happy Friday. I am in my new office. The construction that you guys heard in the background, this is uh, what it was, what people were building. <laughs> Hey, Vancouver. You guys like those signs? <laughs> yeah, I converted my, my uh, Lambo garage for my office. All right, let's give it a few more minutes before we get started. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Philadelphia. No, the office is too small for a bar. All right. I think most of you guys are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today's uh, AMA Friday. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What you know? What what the hell happened yesterday? Right after my video, actually. Hopefully, I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Right after my video yesterday, from Bitcoin fell from like uh, almost ten thousand directly down to ninety five hundred. And then 9,500 fell down to 9,000. 9,000 fell down all the way up down to 8,100 before kind of bouncing back up to around 9,000 right now. So, um, hey guys, those of you guys join in, welcome. Um, yeah, so before we get to the questions, let's, uh, let's talk about what's going on today. Today, there's really not much, okay? So I think I wanna bring up, I want to bring up this again. Uh, let me switch my views. Hold on. Callisto, um, they're introducing a new consensus, um, a new test net. And I know that they're kind of close with Charles uh, Hoskinson from uh, Cardano, but um, who knows? Maybe they form some kind of alliance in the future or something. That's the only thing I'm hopeful for. But as a platform coin, I, I just don't see any potential in them. When will Carl come back for a second interview? You know, my next interview, I'm just going to pre-announce it. It's going to be with uh, Steven Seagal. So... You guys should look forward to that one. I'm really looking forward to talking to, to Stephen. Uh, Litecoin. Yeah. You guys know I, I love Litecoin, right? Litecoin. Um, actually, I should take that back. So last year, for a long time, I will say that I wasn't a fan of Litecoin because I'm like, hey, I don't know. I don't see Litecoin doing anything. Um, and at that time, Charlie was promoting Bitcoin more than Litecoin, so really nothing. And then, um, and then all of a sudden, he he changed his tune. He's like, I'm gonna start promoting Litecoin, and it helped. And we saw a lot more movement, and Litecoin uh, started getting going up in price. And all of a sudden, Charlie said he sold off his Bitcoins. I mean, Litecoins to conflict of interest, and then that kind of stalled things, right? But now introducing LightPay, I think is a really good thing. I think. Sooner or later, you go hear about a lot more merchants or big companies start using Litecoin as a payment, and then it'll start moving up again. So I really like Litecoin 
in 2018. Um, what are my thoughts about Populous and Kyber Network? Um, oh, that's a tough one. That's a neutral. Okay, so Kyber Network, I, I get their their exchange. So I, I did a I kind of did a video about it, right? At the time, I didn't know because I tried to make a I tried to execute a trade, and I didn't know you had to be you had to participate in ICO before you could do that. Um, it, I, I guess Kyber is I don't know. I'm kind of neutral. It's I do like their setup, but they're really not um, they're not decentralized, right? So they're kind of still like a centralized uh, liquidity exchange where they're trying to make it super simple. Right, and I, I think if I remember correctly, Kyber also allows people to uh, to put in their coins to be sold. I think that was Kyber, uh, unless I'm thinking about that was Salt. But um, but yeah, I'm not so I'm not a big fan of Kyber. I'll just say I'm neutral on them in terms of populars, in terms of selling your invoices or crowdfunding invoices. Um, I think that's a unique idea. I've not. I don't know how big of a problem that is. Um, so, but other, but one thing is like he, John McAfee sounds so elegant in his interviews. If you guys watch his interviews with, I saw one, I don't even know when, maybe a year ago um, with Larry King on YouTube. It, when he speaks on public TV or these interviews, he speaks so well. He, I mean, he is truly, um, eloquent that's the best way I could put it but anyways he he was talking about mining right and the I think Larry King or someone was asking him hey why why do you think Bitcoin will go up to a million dollars why do you think it'll continue to keep going up and this is what he shared and I, some of you guys might think this is obvious but it really applies he's like think about right now Bitcoin is there's a finite number we're around 17 million right and but think about when we get to the last 10 right um so bitcoin is pretty much mined out there's only 10 left he's like at that point and now come in like 10 or 15 years from now that's not anytime soon but he's like at that point you gotta realize that miners around the world are paying billions okay in electricity costs in the hardware and manpower whatever right they're paying billions to mine these last 10 coins and do you really think miners are going to be spending that much to mine something that doesn't even have more value? He's like, at that point, each Bitcoin can be hundreds of millions to billions to even trillions. That's why people would be willing to spend billions to mine it, right? And I thought about that, right? Maybe trillions, you know, billions and stuff like that is way, way out there, right? But you got to think, you got all these people that's mining it. And even short term, maybe they're not profiting, right? And when Bitcoin dips, you know, obviously their profits go down, um, but they continue to mine. You don't hear about these Chinese miners or Icelandic miners shutting down their mining operations, right? Because they're mining for the future. They know this is right now, there might be dips, right? But you hold on to those Bitcoins in five to 10 years, they're gonna be way. They're gonna be worth way, way more. So, in terms of mining profitability, even though you want to make a profit now to sustain yourself and grow, but really everyone's mining is because the future potential, not for right now. So, to answer your question, um, yes, it is profitable, and um, and what John McAfee says just makes a lot of sense, right? You got like even today, you have miners around the world that's probably paying you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands a month to maintain their mining operation. Uh, maybe even millions, maybe even like, you know, um, I don't know, let's just say credits or HPP where they're claiming a million transactions per second. I don't know. I mean, obviously that is sounds a little very, very low, but um, I don't know if those other platforms could really handle that much or they're just blowing smoke. Charlie Lee thinks Neo is bad. You know what? I'm just gonna go rant on Charlie Lee because I don't know what his deal is. You know, um, Charlie Lee seems to spread fud sometimes, and then he comes back and says good things about other companies and so forth, right? So I think he should just concentrate more on Litecoin. That's my opinion, right? If I was a creator of a coin, 
and uh, and I'm out there being an influencer, then I would spend more time talking about the coin I created. So I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get what his deal is. Yeah, what about this prick holding 181,000 Bitcoin? Are you talking about Roger Veer? <laughs> no, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's a scary thought to see what he's going to do with it. Um, Latham, the McAfee back. You know what? I, I've lost faith in any ICOs backed by McAfee because it's it's clear that he will back any ICO um, that pays him a lot of money. Actually, a company came into me recently, wanted me to do a sponsor ICO, and I forgot the company name. The, the website and everything just looked really, really shady. And guess what? Who was advisor? McAfee. So, uh, in my opinion, McAfee just really, he just takes the money, they put his name on there, and he tweets it a few times, that's it. He really does not advise them. Um, that's my opinion. So, I would stay away from any ICO where it has McAfee listed as advisor. <clears throat> Komodo. Um, you know what? I haven't looked that much into Komodo. The only thing is, and this might be spreading FUD, is that you look at the team behind Komodo, and they, they've been in like six or seven cryptocurrency. And um, I think Bitcoin Dark, wait, which one was it? Um, what was their last project? Um, I forgot their last project, but basically they keep failing. They keep giving up. They keep coming out with a new coin, and and really Komodo is their last try because if they screw up Komodo again, I don't think they're going to gain any trust anymore. So that's the only thing. I haven't looked specifically no other option to get cash, right? I don't know where this <laughs> this chat went. Every single animal on Earth lays eggs. Okay, what does that have to do with cryptocurrency? <laughs> oh man, uh, what do I think about Mobius? I don't know. I, I never looked at Mobius. Let, let me take a look real quick. Mobius, thirty-one million in market cap. It's is not trading in any good exchange. Uh, connecting the world to blockchain ecosystem. Protocol for connecting consumer applications and high fidelity oracles to the blockchain economy. All right, so it looks like, it looks like it's connecting real world applications into blockchain so they have a picture about alibaba wechat and airbnb goes through a mobius platform and it connects to bitcoin smart contracts stellar lumens so it basically sounds like you know what it kind of sounds like a chain link competitor and it probably is a chain link competitor because that's what chain link does so um I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good. I like Chainlink for that idea, but Chainlink is much bigger. And plus, Mobius right now is it's not being, you know, traded on a decent exchange. It's not a stellar exchange, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I would not recommend that coin right now. Bull run coming. Coinbase will shut down again. Okay, what makes you say that? Do you think Bitcoin mining will ever be profitable again? You know what? Yes. You know, the reason why, okay, I want to tell you guys a story that I lost respect in John McAfee because of all the things that he was trying to uh, pump and it, it didn't work out. And now he kind of changed, especially with Verge, right? We saw with Verge. So there was something going on with Verge where, you know, he, he says some stuff, made it pump, and then he asked for a million dollars. He didn't get it. It got ugly, right? And then, uh, and then he kind of stopped it. He, he still does 
uh, uh, ICOs and stuff, but some of the ICOs that he's been tweeting are very, very shady. Okay. Um, so, but other, but one thing is like he, John McAfee sounds so elegant in his interviews. If you guys watch his interviews with, I saw that's something that you guys have to decide. There's really no other option to get cash, right? I don't know where this <laughs> this chat went. Every single animal on Earth lays eggs. Okay, what does that have to do with cryptocurrency? <laughs> oh man, uh, what do I think about Mobius? I don't know. I, I never looked at Mobius. Let, let me take a look real quick. Mobius, thirty-one million in market cap. It's is not trading in any good exchange. Uh, connecting the world to blockchain ecosystem. Protocol for connecting consumer applications with high fidelity oracles to the blockchain economy. All right. So it looks like it looks like it's connecting real world applications into blockchain so they have a picture about alibaba wechat and airbnb goes through a mobius platform and it connects to bitcoin smart contracts stellar lumens so basically it sounds like you know what it kind of sounds like a chain link competitor and it probably is a chain link competitor because that's what chain link does so um I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good. I like Chainlink for that idea, but Chainlink is much bigger. And plus, Mobius right now is it's not being, you know, traded on a decent exchange. It's not a stellar exchange, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I would not recommend that coin right now. Bull run coming. Coinbase will shut down again. Okay, what makes you say that? Do you think Bitcoin mining will ever be profitable again? You know what? Yes. You know, the reason why, okay, I want to tell you guys a story that I lost respect in John McAfee because of all the things that he was trying to uh, pump and it, it didn't work out. And now he kind of changed, especially with Verge, right? We saw with Verge. So there was something going on with Verge where, you know, he, he says some stuff, made it pump, and then he asked for a million dollars. He didn't get it. It got ugly, right? And then, uh, and then he kind of stopped it. He, he still does uh, uh, ICOs and stuff, but some of the ICOs that he's been tweeting are very, very shady, okay? Um, so, but other, but one thing is, like, he, John McAfee sounds so elegant in his end of how he uh, promoted himself and made himself, you know, multimillionaire, but now his, like, antics don't really work on YouTube anymore um, and Facebook ban uh, cryptocurrency ads so he can't you know advertise on Facebook so it'll be interesting to see uh, if you continue his uh, his marketing shenanigans no my wife does not invest in crypto there's no point if I'm investing in it why would she invest in it right I think Ty rented that mansion, but I think he bought it now. I mean, he he clearly could afford it. I know he likes to like all his Lambos and everything. His Bentleys, Ferraris are all leased, but he does the guy, the dude definitely has money, right? Let's let's not kid ourselves. He made millions upon millions with his program, so um, he's not begging for food off the street. Let's let's say that for sure. Um, Uh, Aeon or Ripple? I like Ripple. Um, you can't deny the fact that Ripple is is just it's it's on a tear. Okay, in terms of all the partnerships, um, in terms of if you look at like all the cryptocurrencies out there, in terms of the one that have made the most partnerships in the real world, it has to be Ripple. They already have sixty banks utilizing Ripple. I just announced yesterday they will come out with a mobile app, right? So they have 60 banks that's on board with it. 
they they have MoneyGram and Western Union, arguably the two largest remittance companies in the world, testing it out. Ripple, and they have other companies testing out Ripple. Ripple is truly the one cryptocurrency that has the most adoption right now. Unfortunately, Ripple was overbought. Okay, right before all this came out, they were extremely overbought, and CNBC and everyone else jumped in on it, got everyone. To get in on it, and that's why it came down. But unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, that kind of screwed things up for them. But you, you can't. Uh, Ripple is making all the right moves, and the fact that they're centralized and all that stuff. That you know what, um, it is what it is, right? They're not going to change, but that doesn't change the fact that they're still working with all these large companies. Yeah, that's true. Not everything in Ripple requires XRP. That is true. But the company is still making money, right? So they're not just relying on XRP to make money. And once you have a company hooked on to one of your products, right, it's much easier to convince them to, do, to try out another one of your products. So it doesn't matter. So all those banks, those 60 plus banks, probably is not. Um, what else is there? Have we talked about Bitcoin price recently? Well, Bitcoin price is, is what it is, right? Right now it's about 8,900. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know what, we might go lower. We'll have to see. Right now it, it did, I didn't mention it, it hit about 8,100, 8,200 last night because it fell pretty drastically and it did a big bounce. It bounced back up and we went a little bit higher today. So we'll have to see. This is this is not a normal dip. This is a very sudden dip. So we don't know what happened behind the scenes, but uh, we will recover from this. Digix Dow. Um, I'm not really sold on Digix Dow, right? Not yet. Um, they have Digix Gold that they're supposed to come out with. That's backed by gold. We will see because that's not out yet. We don't know what what that's going to be like. Um, what is it? Will the Wabi? Oh shoot! I just missed it. Well, someone was asking about Wabi and how they're lagging me on Walton Chain and V Chain. Well, yeah, if they if they go through a rebranding, they'll help. But ultimately, they need some partnerships, right? We have seen V Chain come out with endless, endless partnerships, um, and that's all a good thing. Walton Chain kind of did, but they kind of screwed themselves up, shot themselves in the foot twice with marketing blunders. But nevertheless, they still have partnerships within China, right? And Wabi right now just doesn't. That's the, that's really the only thing holding them back. It, it's bound to happen, right? They're the only player in the game that has the security tab, which no one else has. That's their uniqueness, right? That's why they can tackle canned foods and baby foods and cosmo cosmetics, alcohol, um, they have something very unique, right? So I'll give you an example because they they even um, they even talk about this. They're not in alcohol yet, but they they will be. And you think about like a bottle of wine, because uh, Walton, I think Walton has this on their um, uh, either Walton or Beachain, one of those two, right? Had an example of a bottle of wine where they put their RFID and you can scan it to see if it's legit, right? But the RFID tag is on the label, right? That doesn't mean that someone can't just pop open the cork and dump in whatever they want, right? So that's where Wabi comes in. You can put the label on the freaking uh, cork so no one can tamper with it, right? So it goes a step beyond. So that's why Wabi has a competitive advantage. Uh, just, just right now, they're, they're not taking advantage of it. But once they do, um, they will explode. Ask a simple question because prior to a few weeks ago, he made a big deal about how the market was going to drop to 76.30 on a specific Friday. And I forgot about which Friday it was. And he said that, sold it hard. Um, and then days before, you know, Bitcoin was uh, going up, uh, on a Thursday, I tweeted him and said, hey, do you still think it's going to drop down to 76.30? When at that time, Bitcoin was already like at 10,000. And he just banned me for that, right? And Anyone that calls him out on it and said, hey, what happened? He either bans him or set claims that he didn't do it. But there's plenty of screenshots that show that, right? 
Um, so again, I don't want to be too be too down on on charge with TA people, but he was going to extreme where he would pinpoint to exact like day and almost exact time, and that's just impossible to do when the market. Um, this volatile and this easy to manipulate, there's really no way you can time it that accurately, right? Unless you're the one that's actually driving it and you can actually manipulate the market yourself, which then it's a different story. But I mean, I have nothing against him. It's just that, you know, what he was uh, selling a little bit too hard that he can predict things that accurately. Uh, Taft, I just talked about Blackport. Um, Storm, I like Storm too because they're advisors and they're in the micro jobs market. Um, they need to come out of their platform right now. Whatever they have, the Storm app is more for like buying things, which is great, but there's too much competitiveness, um, competitors in that space. They need to come out of their next app, which is really the micro gigs, micro jobs, and that, that'll really push them. I haven't looked into the key just yet. <sighs> Got a couple of people saying all cryptos is a pyramid scheme, right? And then someone else is saying Bitcoin is a positive scheme. Um, no and no. <laughs> if you guys really think so, I don't know why you're in in here watching it, watching me. <sighs> Where are my thoughts on RDD? I don't like RDD at all. Uh, they're one of those old coins that did nothing. They announced something big, and it's not really even big, and it just shot them through a roof. <sighs> yeah, there's a good amount of people today. There is. Do I play basketball? I do. Um, I'm way... I, I used to play basketball all the time, but not so much anymore, and I've gained a lot of weight, unfortunately. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I can't show you anything, so I apologize for that. Gemini, which is a Coinbase competitor in the U.S., those of you guys that are frustrated with Coinbase should look at Gemini. That's who I use. They plan on adding more crypto tokens, which is really good. They're thinking about Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. So they're basically copying whatever footsteps uh, Coinbase is going. Um, Poliodex, their wallet maintenance is still ongoing which has been going for 16 hours and it still has not completed. So a lot of people are freaking out over that. What else is going on today? Okay, coin. Someone took a screenshot of OK Coin talking with their employees, which is one of the biggest exchanges in China. And there's some kind of Chinese corporation going on where OK Coin is saying they're telling their employees to prepare for that, but we don't know what, like whether or not they become like one of the official like Chinese uh, exchanges, or they're looking for more information. We don't know at this point. All right, that, that's it for news. I don't have any more news. I mean, there's really, today is a slow day. Today is basically everyone is wondering what the hell's going on. And really, there's no, there's no explanation for it. There's no fun news coming out today. No governments coming out saying they're banning exchanges or banning Bitcoin or anything like that. There's nothing like that going on today. Um, it, you know what, this is really, you know, you have to chalk it up to something where there's big players, big whales behind the scene that is basically, right? And all these, all these TA guys, they're coming out in the woodwork saying, you know what, I predicted it. I predicted we're going to go down, right? Um, not, not to this extent. Um, there's a lot of TAs, a lot of charts that say it can happen. This could happen or this could happen, but when something drastically happens to this extent, like within a, that short of a time period, there's something else going on. And we've seen now, right, from the Mt. Gox trustee, when he's selling 10,000, 18,000 Bitcoins at a time in the open market, that's going to make things tank. Okay, not just from himself, but everyone else in the market will see it and they follow through, right? And who knows what kind of insiders um they actually know about that ahead of time that plans it accordingly so you know i just think that something else happened yesterday behind the scenes that we don't know about so all we could do is play safe 
play it smart, and then and then go from there. All right, so let, let's get to questions. I mean, I can't show you guys anything, so but I'll, I'll definitely look it up while you guys are asking it. More. Uh, what else? Block Mason. Um, I haven't looked into Block Mason that much. I like their concept of tracking debt, but along with everything else, they've been hammered. Um, man, they're cheap. They're only at $28 million right now in market cap. Uh, I remember they were much, much higher. Recently, they've been pumped a few times. I noticed on Binance, they went up and down, up and down. But overall, I think I think it's a decent idea. It's not, I don't know, it's it's not really, really something that I think will really take off. Because, you know, to have an app to, to simply track that, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I feel about that. Yeah, when do I think the, the dip will stop? This is going to be hard. This is, you know, when you got a lot of whales that's kind of manipulating the market right now and kind of, you know, dictating the price action, but it's really hard to say when things will stop. So I said in the beginning of the video, really, the key strategy is you want to keep a lot of cash on hand, right? And, of course, do the right um, to make, know when to cost average, when to buy in on the dips, when you know, make sure your portfolio is the por portfolio allocation is correct, and that's really the only thing you can do, right? And and play it smart, obviously, um, you know, take advantage of all the people that uh, you know that that's educating guys on this, and um, and that's the only thing you can really do right now. Am I a secret whale? No, I wish I was. No, I'm not. All right. Uh, to avoid market manipulation, do we need some kind of regulation or centralized global crypto union? No, no, we don't. I mean, you, you guys got to realize, right, the, the reason why it can be manipulated is because basically there's not that much money in it, all right? So one of the things you guys got to realize is even though the market shows that we're at around $400 billion, there's not $400 billion in the market, okay? Um, the prices go up. It's all supply and demand, right? And I don't know the exact, exact number that's in it, 